Why are you laughing? <laughs> Memories. Are... <laughs> well, the thank you. The music. Oh, the mem oh, the music was bringing you back yes. to the Olympics. I love it. I love it. That's awesome. Well, thank you so so much for being here with us today. What do you think so far? Awesome. This is incredible. You know, taking pictures with all the young ladies and the different state champions and coaches and their parents and this is just remarkable. Well, we are so grateful to have you here. You've heard us talk a lot today about how sports can change the trajectory of a girl's life. Can you start by just telling us a little bit about what was your life when you were a young girl and how did you find sports? Well, I grew up in East St. Louis and I was exposed to athletics through a community center. And my, my, my mom really wanted me to just get an education, focus on my schoolwork. She didn't want me to get pregnant, so. <laughs> and when I wanted to run track, she was very hesitant because the coaches were strangers and she didn't know who these people are or where at the time. But my dad, who was involved in athletics, told my mom it was okay. But when I first went out for running, I finished last. <laughs> and I was nine years of age, and, and I just said, if I could improve a tenth of a second if I'm running, or half of an inch if I'm jumping, then that meant that I was getting better. So that's how it started. So in the beginning, you didn't really know what a gift that you had. When did you first realize that you had true talent? You never realize. It. <laughs> <laughs> it's your coaches. <laughs> they see the potential, well, they saw the potential in me that I did not know I, that I had. And they told me I had to be willing to work hard, and I did that. But, and even though I saw myself improving, going from, in track and field, you know, they put you on the grass, forget ribbons, and everybody else is on the podium. And I said, I want to get on the podium. podium. So I had to work a little harder, and so that meant, you know, when I started getting third place, second place, first place, you know, in the back of your mind, you are kind of good, but <laughs> you don't get big-headed, you think know? you're kind of good. <laughs> no, because you have to keep things in perspective. That's awesome. That's excellent. Um, one thing I think a lot of people don't know is that when you were at UCLA, you were not only a track and field athlete, but you were also a basketball player. Pretty good one, if I remember right. Um, at Camp Win, we teach girls 16 different sports. So can you talk a little bit about being a multi-sport athlete and maybe what, how that benefited you? The one thing I learned about team sport, it taught me a lot to respect other space, others' roles, as well as working together as a team. But doing uh, basketball, running track, I think basketball strengthened me, gave me, I knew when I left basketball, I had to work on my speed work. But I also realized it helped me to prioritize, uh, set my goals, what I'm going to do, and and I think it's very important for young people that are participating in one, two, three, four, five different sports at a young age. Have fun. You know, just enjoy it. You never know where, what avenue you're going to, to pursue. But for me, basketball was just another sport I enjoyed, and I got my scholarship in it. But track was my love and my heart. And I wanted to go to the Olympics and be on TV in track and field. <laughs> <laughs> well, talk a little bit more about that, about being an Olympian. Did you have like a moment where you realized, oh my gosh, I am an Olympian? I think the, the greatest thing was wearing that USA across your chest. And in high school, <laughs> In high school, 
I wear the same spikes for three years straight. You know, and when you make you go to the Olympic trials, they give you this big old bag, a whole lot of goodies. You know? <laughs> and I was like, wow, this is nice. And I didn't even make the team, but <laughs> <laughs> so going to my first Olympic trials as a high schooler, I realized that I was nervous, my knees were knocking, and I didn't know if I could really do it. And my high school coach, uh, Coach Nino, Nino Fanoi, uh, said to me, you know, you just continue working. And I remember Brooks Johnson, who was recruiting me from Stanford, and he walked past me and he whispered in my ears and said, the Lord works in me in mysterious ways. And I was like, I don't even know him, him man. What is he talking about? <laughs> you know? And I said, said something to my high, high school coach, and he shared with me who Mr. Johnson was at, at that time. And then four years later, he was our Olympic coach for the 1984 Olympic Games. Wow, that's amazing yes. how it kind of comes, comes back around like that. Yes. Um, Everyone in this room has probably faced some adversity at some point in their life, and I know you've faced adversity in your athletic career. Maybe talk to us a little bit about one of those times and, and how you overcame your setbacks. The biggest thing is dealing with it, injuries, because you second guess yourself, your coaches, everyone who's in you on your corner. And for me, dealing with, with injuries, I had to really think positive, but then also behave in a positive way and listen to my coaches and everyone who was saying, it's gonna be okay. But for me, the doubt in my, in the, the, excuse me, the doubt in the back of my mind is that my leg is injured, something must be wrong. So I had to really work on that. It's easy to say and difficult to do. Absolutely. And then I know maybe talk a little bit about, you know, we talked the other day about your first Olympics, you had injuries and you had to deal with it then. And then in the 1996 Olympics, you also dealt with injuries. Talk a little bit about what you learned and how you applied that in 96. Again, I dreamed about going to the Olympics in 1984, my first Olympic Games. I have an opportunity to win a gold medal, but I was injured and my coaches, my physical therapist was telling me, everything is going to be okay. And, but for me, I doubted. And I went in, into those games thinking something's wrong. And I went to the start line, not thinking like a champion. I was looking for an, an excuse every time. The leg itself was okay. But ment mentally, I wasn't ready. And when I stepped on that line, going through the seven different events, I was searching for a pain that wasn't there. And because that pain wasn't there, I used my energy up in a negative way. And I remember going through the, through the two-day two competition and it was just unbearable. But, I finish up, finish up with the silver medal, and I said to myself, if God bless me to make it another Olympic team, then I want to be the toughest athlete out there mentally. And that's what I set my sights on for the next four years. And, and in 88, came back, back-to-back -back goals, a world record, and then made another Olympic team, another gold medal, and then... 
<laughs> wow, that's outstanding. I want to transition a little bit because I'd like to hear a little bit about your foundation. Do you mind talking a little bit about your foundation, the community center? What's the mission? What's that all about? As a little girl, I grew up in a community center. And because of that, I have to talk really slow because this is bouncing back. So bear with me. I'm trying to deal with this mic. <laughs> I see my manager over there like, what you doing? <laughs> She's doing fine. I'm like, I'm okay. She's doing fine. I'm not having a stroke or anything. I'm okay. <laughs> Just trying to get it out. Okay. But anyway, <laughs> I came through the community center and it made a difference in my life. And when I was competing, I always knew I wanted to go back in, into the, to, to the community. And throughout the people who made a difference in my life. And so my journey uh, making Olympic teams, working with sponsors, I always share my passion for wanting to go back into the community. So I built, first I was trying to reopen the center that I grew up in. And the Mayor Brown Center was significant to me because when I went off to school my freshman year, I lost my mom. And she died unexpectedly from the worst form of string of meningitis. And I'm a freshman and I don't have my, I call, she was always my mom, but my best friend. And when I traveled back from LA to St. Louis to travel over to East St. Louis, and I wanted to go somewhere where, where I could find love and you know, not feeling so down, and that center was closed. So what I decided to think was that maybe one day I could reopen that center but I didn't know it would cost money and do all that, you know. <laughs> I just had a vision. And, but, I, but I knew staying back in the East St. Louis wasn't the best thing for me. And the one thing I had going for me was the scholarship and that I really needed to go back to school and focus on my academics and continue to think about maybe one day I could open up a center. And from 1981 through 84, then 88, you know, I would do different things throughout the, the community because I said I didn't need a building to help people. So from my sponsorships and everyone that I work with, I would funnel the money into different programs that I was involved with. And then maybe, Nine, nine years later, had an opportunity to break ground on the, the existing facility that we have today, which opened in two, 2000, and we sit on 37 acres. We, the building itself is 41,000 square feet. We are adding an additional 20,000 square feet because we are working with Head Historic and they are a tenant, and so we building a, a wing, but then also a wrestling um, center in there, as well as we do after school program. We use sports as a hook to get them in, in the door and then expose, the, expose them to things that they don't think they need to be exposed to, like life skills and all kind of things they don't want to work on. But sports has been very good to me. And that's what uh, the community center is about, dream, drive, and the determination. That's remarkable. That's Thanks. remarkable. Thank you. Thank you. I could really sit here and talk to you all day. Um, unfortunately, there's probably some folks that will eventually need to go back to work. So um, one more question for you. 
There are probably over 200 state champion high school female student athletes here in the room. What advice would you leave with them? My advice I would leave with them, one, is to stay true to who you are. Always be willing to work hard. Always be aware of the company that you keep. Always be a great listener. And never, never, never give up on yourself, your dreams. And even if you hit a wall and you want to quit, no, turn it around and say, like, when, when, when you could win. Keep that in mind. When, when you could win. Someone said that to me when I was 13 years of age, and I didn't know what that meant until I went to the 84 Olympic Games, and I had an opportunity to win, but I fell short. And it motivates me still today to win when I can win. And be respectful of others. Be respectful of yourself. And always be kind. And don't just strive for me. I never strive to be a great athlete. I really strive to be a great person. Because my mom never got a chance to share the moment of me telling her that one day I won't go, I'm going to go to the Olympics. And not only did I go, my brother went. He won the first gold medal in my family, and I followed behind him. But the great thing about why sports is so important, champions, and why you work hard and you go to practice, because when I was younger, my brother is older, he never believed in practicing. practicing. He would tell his friend, tease me, and so we had a match race. <laughs> Ladies. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm not bragging, but it's the facts. I outran him, and I turned around and said, that's what practice does for you. Go to Woo! practice. Right on. Thank you. <laughs> Jackie, thank you so much for being with us today. You. you are a true example of what we stand for, and we're so grateful for you to be here. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it. Thank you.